On the banks of New York's Hudson River, one of America's most ambitious infrastructure projects faced a colossal challenge. The replacement for the aging Tappan Zee Bridge required lifting modules heavier and more massive than almost anything before it. But the tool for the job didn't exist on the East Coast. The only solution was located on the other side of the continent, a legendary machine that had already proven itself on the West Coast. To finish the job, engineers had to embark on an unprecedented logistical operation, towing a 328-foot tall floating crane on a 6,000-mile journey from California, down through the Panama Canal, and all the way to New York. This is the story of that machine, the Left Coast Lifter, and the epic voyage it took to save a billion-dollar project. This is Hard Hat Industries, where heavy machinery comes alive. So, what kind of machine is worth towing across a continent? The Left Coast Lifter's power lies in its specialized design. It's a shear leg -like crane, a distinct class of crane that sacrifices rotational ability for raw, uncompromising power. Unlike a conventional 360-degree rotating crane, its two massive legs are fixed at the base in an A-frame configuration, channeling all lifting forces directly down into the hull. This makes it one of the most stable lifting platforms ever conceived. Its foundation is a purpose-built, non-propelled barge, measuring 384 feet long and 100 feet wide. These dimensions were meticulously calculated to provide immense stability, fighting the natural tendency to roll in a swell or pitch in open water. It has no engine of its own, relying entirely on tugboats for movement, a floating fortress of pure potential. On this platform rests the core of its power, a lifting capacity that is difficult to comprehend. A certified 2,126 US tons. That's over 4.2 million pounds. To visualize that, imagine lifting a fleet of 30 M1 Abrams main battle tanks all at once. Reaching high above the deck is the massive 328-foot-long boom, which when raised to its full height stands taller than a 30-story building. But the real secret, the technological heart that allows this giant to function, is the sophisticated computer-controlled ballast system. From a dedicated control room, a highly skilled crew can pump thousands of gallons of seawater per minute between massive internal tanks. As the crane's hook takes on a load, the system perfectly counteracts the weight, keeping the barge level to within a fraction of a degree. It is, in every sense, a heavyweight champion. A $50 million tool engineered for tasks beyond the scale of any ordinary machine. With specs like these, what do you think is the biggest challenge in operating such a machine? The weather, the complexity of the lifts, or finding a skilled enough crew? Let us know your thoughts. But a machine this powerful and specialized doesn't just appear. It must be forged in a crisis of its own. To understand the Left Coast Lifter, we have to go back to its origin story in the San Francisco Bay. At 5.04 p.m. on October 17, 1989, as the nation's attention was on the Baseball World Series, the Loma Prieta earthquake ripped through the region. A 50-foot section of the Bay Bridge's upper deck collapsed, and while quickly repaired, the incident exposed a terrifying truth. The entire eastern span was seismically unsafe. The replacement bridge was one of the most complex ever designed, a single-tower self-anchored suspension bridge. Unlike a traditional suspension bridge anchored to the land, its main cables anchored to the bridge deck itself. This created a monumental chicken and egg problem. You couldn't build the tower and cables without the deck, and you couldn't support the deck without the tower and cables. The only solution was to build the deck first, lifting unimaginably heavy sections into place, and then build the tower up through them. The heaviest of these sections were over 1,700 tons. After an exhaustive global search, the project's contractors, American Bridge and Floor, realized no such crane existed. They had to build one. The commission went to Shanghai Jianhua Heavy Industries, the world leader in massive port machinery. It was a $50 million gamble, but it paid off. On the Bay Bridge, the lifter flawlessly hoisted and set all 28 massive deck sections. It did what no other American crane could do. When its work was done, it was put up for sale, 
a proven champion waiting for its next great challenge. Is it better for a company to sell off a highly specialized machine after a project or keep it in case another job comes up? Discuss the pros and cons in the comments. That next great challenge was brewing not in the sunshine of California, but over the murky waters of the Hudson River. For decades, the Tappan Zee Bridge was known locally as the Tappan Scare for good reason. Built during the Korean War with a limited budget, it was designed to last only 50 years. It had no emergency shoulders, its lanes were dangerously narrow, and its accident rate was alarmingly high. The constant, costly repairs were barely keeping it together. A replacement was a state of emergency. The new Governor Mario M. Cuomo Bridge was a state-of-the-art, twin-span cable-stayed design, intended to serve the region for the next century. But its construction depended on lifting and placing enormous prefabricated steel girder assemblies, the spine of the new bridge, some weighing over 1,100 tons and measuring longer than a football field. The project's contractors, Tappan Zee constructors, faced the same daunting realization their counterparts in California had years earlier. No crane on the East Coast could handle the job. The entire project timeline was in jeopardy. Imagine the meetings in the project office, poring over schematics and logistics with no viable solution. Then, someone points 3,000 miles west. They pointed to the one machine in the country that had a proven track record of lifts on this scale. It was a legend. It was the only option. They needed the left coast lifter. What's a bigger risk for a mega project? Relying on a single one-of-a-kind piece of equipment or trying to make do with less capable conventional methods? Let us know your thoughts below. What followed was one of the most audacious heavy haul operations in modern history. You don't simply hook up a 328 foot tall crane and tow it. The preparation, known as sea fastening, took weeks. The boom had to be lowered and welded to a temporary support structure to prevent it from moving. All equipment on deck was secured, and the entire vessel was inspected and certified for an ocean voyage. Then began the 6,000 mile multi week journey. Pulled by a powerful ocean going tugboat, the lifter was dragged south along the Pacific coast. The first great hurdle was the Panama Canal. Here, the challenge was surgical precision. The canal's historic locks are 110 feet wide. The lifter's barge is 100 feet wide, leaving a scant 5 feet of clearance on each side. Guided by canal pilots and pulled by electric locomotives called mules, the colossal structure was painstakingly inched through the narrow waterway, a high-stakes ballet where a single miscalculation could block world trade. After emerging into the Caribbean, the journey was far from over. It had to navigate the hurricane-prone waters of the Gulf of Mexico, round the Florida Peninsula, and begin the final thousand-mile push up the Atlantic seaboard, battling coastal weather the entire way. For the crew of the tug, it was weeks of seeing nothing but the silent, giant crane behind them. Finally, the sight of the lifter passing the Statue of Liberty and steaming up the Hudson River was a major event. For the construction workers on the new bridge, its arrival was more than just a delivery. It was the arrival of the key that would unlock the entire project. The 6,000-mile gamble had paid off. The champion had arrived, and the job could finally be finished. Which part of this journey do you think was the most nerve-wracking for the crew? The unpredictable Pacific Ocean or the claustrophobic Panama Canal transit? Tell us why. The left coast lifter is more than just a crane. It's a testament to bold engineering and a symbol of national cooperation. A machine built to solve one city's crisis became the only answer for another's, undertaking an epic 6,000-mile journey to finish the job. It proves that sometimes the most challenging problems require you to not just think outside the box, but to tow the solution halfway around the world. Thanks for watching Hard Hat Industries, your source for serious machines doing real work. If you like this, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss what's next. Until then, keep your head down and your gear running.